Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the final session of the Telegraph Summer Food and Drink Virtual Festival. Um, my name's Amy Bryant. I'm the Telegraph Food Editor, and I'm thrilled to have you here. If you've come in from a hot garden or you've finished watching the football and you're joining us, welcome. I'm thrilled that you've, you've spared a bit of time with us. We've enjoyed two days on a very hot weekend of virtual cook-alongs and cocktail masterclasses. And this is the final one. And soon I should be thrilled to introduce Romy Gill to the stage to join me this evening. We're going to be following Romy's recipes for vegetable pakoras um, with a delicious parsley and walnut uh, chutney. So now over to Romy. Romy is joining us from home and I'm thrilled to have her here with us for the festival to finish off the final session of the Telegraph's uh, virtual series. So you may recognise Romy from many places. You might have seen her on the television, on Saturday Kitchen or on Celebrity MasterChef. You may have her cookbook, Psyche. Um, you may have followed her on Instagram. Or you may latterly be spying her on Ready Steady Cook, where she's a regular chef undertaking all manner of challenges with, um, you know, mystery ingredients and crazy time uh, limits and then challenges thrown in from presenter Ryland. So I'm hoping that this evening's session will be not quite so pressurised and we can just relax a bit with Romy as we cook along with her. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Romy who who will say hello and sort of explain what we're going to make and how and I will hop on and off the screen so as to give Romy a bit of air time so you can see what's going on but I'll hop back on as and when you have questions to ask and we'll just keep the conversation flowing so I do hope you enjoy it with us and now I'll hand over to Romy hello hello hi Amy how are you so um, sunny isn't it it's beautiful. I mean, I, I can't grumble that we're in the kitchen, but it's been a nice day. I know. It's, we had such bad weather in May, so it's a, such a relief to have such a good weather because I think we all needed that. Boost our energies up. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so excited to do this. Are you, guys? And are you? Real. Everyone's so excited. I can't believe where people are joining us from. Uh, Vienna. Is, is one Toronto Brian's in Toronto so uh, we've got a lot of followers here Romy who are who are looking forward to, to being with you oh, that's amazing um I am really looking forward to making this pakora recipe because this is a recipe that um I grew up with my uh, friends my mommy used to make in a rainy day or a sunny day I think you come back to pakora so my dad having a glass of whiskey and having some nibbles as pakoras so I think this is something I um I love and my daughters when they were little they loved making it and something that you can go back to your family all the time you know cook with the family and make an abundance and uh keep it in the freezer as well if you make it and then take it out of the of the freezer and not ever do not ever um warm them up in a microwave always defrost a little bit and then put it in the oven very low heat and they'll crisp up so all these kind of um tricks when i had little children they're teenagers girls now but i used to do that you know make an abundance so what i'm going to start with is with uh, making an oil hot i'm bringing it to really high temperature so that's the key to it and once it's very hot because everybody doesn't have a fryer at home so we are going to then uh lower the heat uh once it is hot kind of keep it in the middle temperature Okay, so what we're doing is we're adding vegetable oil to a saucepan, if you have one. Um, and how full are we making our pan or our vessel with oil, Romy? It's going to be only level till half. If it, a pan is big, so it's a pan like this, will be half of what my pan looks like. So if, okay. you, if we have a saucepan, half that. Don't fill it up because when it's boiling and when you're making the um you know, pakoras they might just come out the oil might spread out so you have to be very careful with that yeah people can be rightly quite wary of cooking with hot oil can't they so it's <laughs> it's worth mentioning that yeah keeping it below half full just helps the safety aspect a little bit more especially if you're if you're not comfortable with it so I, i'm i'm doing it along with you as well Romy and everyone else i'm just putting my vegetable oil on the heat now 
Uh, so are you starting it on a, you're starting it on a very high heat, are you? I am starting on a very high heat. Once okay. you can see all the heat coming out of the oil, you know, you can see that. And then you will lower the temperature to kind of medium, not low. Make sure it's not low, then your pakoras will be very soggy and it won't be cooked. So the temperature has to be very medium. So from 100, let's say it's got to be like between 60, 65. So you have to make sure of that. Um, and also, oil is something that I would always recommend people. If you have a hob, do not cook it in the front sets of the hob. Always cook it at the back because you never know what you're doing. A child comes in and you can eat you know, the oil. It's happened to me in the restaurant, so be very careful. Okay, <laughs> so, good tip. I'll remember that. Very good okay. tip. So uh, trust me, you, you make sure your oil is always at the back of the hob when you're okay. with your chips or anything. So the yeah. oil is getting hot, Amy. We are going to make a chutney first. You know, okay. in India, we always make a chutney very fresh. So I'm just going to go through the ingredients we're going to before we blitz it. So I have some onion. You can have right white onion. You can have, uh, you know, red onion or shallots or anything like that. I have chopped roughly here, and some green chilies and some garlic. Okay. And have you kept the seeds in those chilies, Romy? If you like a bit of heat. Uh, absolutely don't take the seeds out i think that's or maybe less the chilies you can use half the amount of the chilies but keep the seeds up if you don't like chilies just leave it out you know just leave it okay. out um so that's i have fine. that here and i've chopped i'm going to quickly oil. interrupt you sorry to interrupt you romi and um, julie's just asked the sort of oil we're using julie is vegetable oil yes. um yes so we've put so we haven't given you amount. We've just said go by the by the size of the pan you're using and fill it up uh, less than half full. So we're using vegetable oil for this dish. Yeah, any any kind of vegetable oil, sunflower oil is great as well. Rapeseed oil is good as well. But it's just bringing the temperature. The oil is is a good quality. You know, not and never ever cook with fry in olive oil. So never okay. do that. Okay, sunflower yeah. oil is fine and rapeseed oil is great as well. People in India use mustard oil as well, and some people will use ghee. So all yep. that, if you love ghee, you can use ghee as well, you know? Good to know. That's good to know. Uh, so I have some walnuts here, chopped walnuts. Yeah. These are all ingredients for the chutney. So I yep. just want to make sure as well that if some people are allergic to nuts or any kind of nuts, they can leave this out, you know? They can always leave that out and add other things to it. So I have some parsley chopped here. Yeah. So about we've we've asked for about about forty grams yes. um, of parsley, about twenty five grams of walnut. I expect Romy, you're quite used to probably doing it by handfuls and by sight. I'd imagine rather than weighing it down. I, I need to be. I need to say this. So this is forty grams. Yes, of parsley. What I will also say is, if you have black leaf parsley or the bulk parsley, you can use both of them. They are really, I have in my garden, so I've just plucked it and chopped it. So it's about 40 grams of parsley and uh, stocks as well, because the stock, stocks are so nice. I love the flavor, even in coriander, I always have the stocks to it because it's more flavorful. And if you don't yeah. like parsley, you can use coriander or mint. The beauty about Indian food is you can alternate with things. So that, Great. and then we have some oil here, olive oil. Um, okay which is about four to five teaspoons of olive oil. Four to five teaspoons, yeah. So, I'm like, so glad you mentioned that about using other herbs because I forgot to buy parsley today. So I'm making mine with coriander. So I hope that will work all right. Yes, yes, coriander. In India, we use more coriander than parsley people would use. I bet, yeah. A lime, or if you don't yeah. have a lime, a lemon would do fine too, yeah? So before you're going to cut it, so if you roll it like this, if you see here, if I roll it, you get more juice out. It's you get more skin. See how soft has it has become? Because sometimes the lemon and limes can be hard. But if you roll it on your and then it becomes soft. So yeah, roll it like this. So that's quite soft. So I am going to, because we only need half of it. So half. So if you see here, so the juice, I'm not gonna I'm gonna show you. Look at the juice, how it comes. If you do that, look at the juice coming out. So that's it. it smells delicious. Okay, and we need some yogurt as well. I've got some garlic. So also with garlic, I've said two cloves of garlic. Sometimes the garlic cloves can be quite 
thick and some can be very thin. So use roughly about, if they are um, really big ones, use only one or small ones and use two. I'm gonna get some yogurt as well from my fridge. So I've got some yogurt here as well. We're gonna only use a tablespoon of natural yogurt. So I'm gonna add everything in my blender here. Keep an eye on your oil, everybody, please, because you don't want it to be too hot. I'm just gonna turn that to medium because this induction hobs get very, very hot very quickly. So we have here, we're gonna add the chopped parsley or if you're using coriander, you can use that. Green chilies and salt. Salt I would recommend to according to your taste but I am going to put about a teaspoon but you can use sea salt, fine salt, any salt that you like and then chilies back more, onions. I squeeze the lemon juice in the water which is about 40 to 50 ml but we're going to use only 40 first and then let use the rest. So I've weighed my um, uh, water as well, and then the olive oil. You can use sunflower oil as well, you can use anything. And there goes the nuts. So all in there, beautiful, and then some yogurt. Just leave that there. I hope this gadget works because this is a new gadget. I got it. Yeah, it works. And we're gonna blend it. Could you make this sort of chutney, um, Romy? If you just if you didn't have a blender but you wanted to hand chop everything, I suppose you could make a sort of rough version of it. Could you? You can just re grate it, not the, uh, obviously you can't grate the chop parsley and stuff, just yeah. chop it really fine. But you know you have a nut, like a nut grater, you can get a nut grater, you can squash with the pestle and mortar. If you have pestle and mortar, that's the best thing to do. So in India, when I was growing up, we didn't have a blender or anything. My dad used to make in a post pestle and mortar. So you can do yeah. that, you can grate it, grate the onions, grate the garlic, um, and rest, you know, just chop it and make it. You can have a chunky chutney. So in India, it's no half fast rule. You can have a chunky chutney, you can have a fine paste as well. Okay. So you can do so many different ways. That's great. I'm going to just ask one request of you, Roby, and this may seem very strange in your environment. If I could ask you just to sort of shout up a little bit, um, yes, just yes. a couple of people just having struggles hearing, and I just think it's the distance of the laptop probably away from where you are. I can hear you very well, but just for the benefit of everyone, if you wouldn't mind I raising you your can. voice slightly. <laughs> I will, I will, I will make sure I'm, I'm screaming. I will yeah. stop my voice. Let, let, yeah, can you just let all the neighbours know that you're doing a live Telegraph cook-along and that I, they'll, all, they'll all join in as well. Okay, my thanks. My neighbours love me because I cook for them. When I'm recipe testing, they love me. And even in my postman used to love me. So, so has everybody added all the ingredients in their, in the blender? Let's hope everyone has. I think they're all cooking along. Mine has just been given a whiz up as well and looks quite similar to you. So it's quite pale. Um, yes, I'm just going to go through. So we have 40 grams of parsley. We had 25 grams of walnuts. Leave it out if you have nut allergy. Then half a juice of lime. And make sure if you're using a lime or lemon, make sure you to put that on your table or a chopping board so you get extra juice. And then 30 grams of onion. You can use red, white, shallots, anything that you like. And then we had green chilies. If you like too much, you like heat more, add more. Otherwise, you add less. We had salt, olive oil, yogurt, natural yogurt, water. So I haven't added all the water to this one. I only added probably 40 ml, not 50. So depending on how liquid you want, you can add 50 ml to it as well. So I'm just going to whiz that and show you guys how it actually looks. Uh, super, that's done. 
I'm going to put that, if I bring it with the spoon forward like that, you can see how I want the bite to it. I don't want it at like a fine paste. So, I'm going to put it in a bowl. Actually, this one will be better so you guys can then see better. You want to leave out oil if somebody is looking after their weight or something um uh, if i do like healthy re recipes then i don't add any oil i'll add extra water um and i'll add and for vegans i'll add coconut yogurt you know so you can do that so here we go that's the chutney you can see that it's lovely Keep an eye on your oil as well, everyone, please. Yeah, my oil has sort of started to smoke now. I'm I'm turning it down. Have you seen I, this chutney? Does it look like this, Amy? It does look spot on. And I guess that yes. chutney can, can be used for um for other dishes as well, not just these pakoras, but it's quite versatile, isn't it? It is. If you love sweet potatoes or uh, any on any like even potatoes, normal potatoes, I love using sweet potatoes cooking them in the oven and then you know once they're cooked i put that chutney on it it's delicious yeah. perfect this is mine so yeah. i'm sort of very pleased to see it's similar i hope i i'm really speaking loudly now sorry guys you couldn't hear me I'm i think it's all you. good it's all good you you keep doing what you're doing it's it's, it's working well. i'm not great at technology so yes it's oil you were saying something about the oil uh yes yeah, so mine is smoking um, I probably didn't turn it down at, at when you did. Um, so I've just brought it down a bit so it doesn't get too crazy. Is that the right thing so to bring do? Bring it down to low. So if anybody yeah. has done the same thing, so bring it down to low while we are going to start with our mixing the ingredients for the pakora. Bring it okay. down to low. That's what I've done as well. You know, when I put my hand up there, I can feel the heat. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, bring it down. So everyone um, has got their garam flour which is the chickpea flour so this chickpea flour a lot of people might not know this chickpea flour is made from the black chickpea flour it's not the chickpea that you get from the white ones um and also i'm just going to sieve it i think it's very important to sieve um this any flour when you're making cakes or baking or anything um even making chapatis i think it's really important to sieve otherwise you'll get these lumps in your pakoras yeah gonna do all of that this is about 100 grams this is 100 grams of garam flour gram flour we'll call it and if you couldn't find these you can always use plain flour um and also which i've kind of learned recently on my trip to himalayas buckwheat flour is great uh, then also chickpea flour you can use any kind of flour if you can't find those, you can always alternate with different flowers. Okay. I like using a smaller sieve than a big one. So that's why, guys, I don't have a big sieve. That's it. We are done. And we don't have any lumps. I'm not going to waste anything with my fingers. I'm going to make sure they're all... Yeah. There you go. So that's my flour saved. So I have grated my ginger. So my ginger as well was very soft. What I've done here, I haven't peeled it. So the skin's on there as well. So if, you, if the ginger is really good quality, just wash it and you don't really need to um, grate, peel the skin off. And then one teaspoon of grated ginger. So also, I should have shown you this. So if you grate it, see that water coming out, the juice coming out from the ginger? That is brilliant because that's going to make it more earthy, more warm uh, of flavors as well. So that's done. Now I am going to add some chili flakes I have, or chili powder you can, I make my own, I get whole, 
whole chilies, which are Kashmiri chilies, and then blend them. So you can add as much as you want to. I'm adding one and a half teaspoon to two teaspoon. So keep on making or stirring them, mix them. Now always try to have a bigger bowl. It's better to have a bigger bowl. And this is my own homemade garam masala, but nowadays you can find really, really good quality garam masala as well. And if you, those who don't know what garam masala is, it's blend of different spices and every household in India will have different. So these, this is about two teaspoon of garam masala. If you don't have it, you can have ground cumin, you can add ground coriander to it as well. So it all works in different ways. So, and some people like my mom used to add fresh green chilies as well. So I haven't added that and I'm going to add salt. So seasoning with Indian food is very important. Salt to taste, but I've added one teaspoon. Potatoes, they are about the size of a sweet corn. But to the size of the sweet corn kernels, that makes sense. So everything sort of cooks at the same rate. Um, Felicity has asked, Romy, um, how hot are these pakoras going to turn out with the amount of chilli flakes that you've added to your batch? Are they, they have a lot of heat to them? These are not, the Kashmiri chilies are not very hot. So Kashmiri chilies give you colour when you make it into a paste in hot water. And Kashmiri chilies gives you warmth of flavour, warmth in your throat, rather than the heat that you will get. So it isn't very hot. But if that's what I've said, if somebody wants to less the amount, they can less the amount. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and make, it make, batch, yeah. make sure you kind of stir all the ingredients together before we're going to add all the vegetables in that. Yeah? Everybody's done that. And please keep hydrating yourself. It's very hot. So keep on drinking water or if you're having gin or um, wine, <laughs> beer. <laughs> so this is chopped coriander. So you can... It's about a handful, so you can add about one tablespoon of that okay. um, in there. And then sweet corn, you can have frozen, you can add the fresh, you can add tinned, just anything that's available handy. That's gone in there, it's already looking great, and the potatoes. And also, if you have something, if you eat meat, if you have leftover chicken, like a roast, you've made a roast or something, or chicken breast, if there is leftover in the fridge, you can add that here as well. Tear it and put it in the batter. And then I have about 30 grams of, that was 75 grams of potatoes, peeled in, into small chunks, um, same size as the sweet corn, and some roughly chopped um, spinach, but also another great take is you can add um, kale, you can add and mix it with your fingers, okay? You can add different kind of stuff and you can add a lot of coriander if you like coriander. If you don't have spinach, you can add any kind of greens you have. Also the cauliflower leaves, take the bit, middle stock out and then you can add the leaves to it as well. Chop it and add the leaves. They're really delicious. And another one I love is my daughter's love is the beetroot leaves. They are really good. And here I have sliced onions, thinly sliced. Make sure you kind of do that so all this, they go all separate. They're not together. They're all separate then. Okay. Mix it before we're going to add any water to this. Okay. I have my water here. So it's about 80 to 100 ml, but I am going to put in my hand first and do that gently because I don't want to add the whole water quickly. That's going to then otherwise be too much water. This is perfect. I'm not going to add any more water because sometimes when you leave your potatoes chopped and wash them or onions, water come out of them. So just be careful. And when you wash the spinach as well, there'd be water in that. So this is how your batter should look like. See if it's sticky and together.
Are you guys all ready? I hope you're looking forward to eat this with anything you're drinking. Can't wait. I see you're preferring your hand for mixing, Romy, aren't you, over, say, a wooden spoon or a tablespoon? Is that better yes. to understand how the mixture is? So what I would do is when you're kneading a dough, you don't do it with a spoon or something, you know. It's, it's better to always do it with your fingers, or only because then you can feel how much water is in it. Otherwise, you end up uh, putting more water, and then you, what you'll do is you'll try to add more flour, then all the ingredients that you have added in the pakora mixture, then you'll have to add more. So it's better that you, you do that. Um, I'm making a mess. <laughs> oh gosh. There you go. Hope everybody's ready and make sure your oil is really, really low temperature. I'm just going to add a little bit of this, but I should use a little bit of this and to just to check how hot my oil is. So it's very, very hot. It's good. It's the perfect temperature that I'm looking for. If it floats up, whatever you're going to add, a little bit of it, if you're going to add that, if it floats up, your oil is perfect temperature. Is it worth us having, um, before we put our pakora mixture in, Is it, do you have any kitchen roll? Is that what we'll put it out on when it comes out? Yes, on the plate? I, have, I, I did say in the recipe, but I have already here kitchen roll and a bowl. Okay. All ready here. Have you got ready? I'm, I'm ready. Both, I think I'm my oil is ready. To be ready before we're going to, we're going to do this together. We're not going to rush for it. Have you got, everybody's got these two things? They can have this and they can also have the tongs. It's easier with the tongs as well to bring them out. Just going to have a sip of water. It's really hot. And my kitchen is just lemon water, nothing else. <laughs> um, so in India, they will actually do it like this, okay? But I am going to do, for you guys, I don't want you to burn your fingers. I'm just going to add like that. So you guys are just going to pick up half a tablespoon and then about here, and then you're going to dip it in the oil. Don't make it too big because then it won't be cooked and then your outer side will be crispy, inner side will be soggy. So be careful with that. This is looking great. So I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys. Look at that. Can you see? That looks spot on and it's only been in a matter of seconds, hasn't it, Romy? Yes. So does it look like this, Amy? Okay, hang on. Oh, you're putting me under pressure now. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me get a good specimen. Oh. No, no, I wonder no, no, no. if I um here we are, hang on. I'm just gonna drip hot oil all over my laptop. Bear with. Okay, here's mine. Yay! Yes. Possibly the other big side. I put in some small ones after that. Yeah, um, you can make small. I just I don't want anybody undercooking them. That's what I meant. If you want it, just because I can't see the temperature of the oil everybody's got it, I don't right. want them to make a mistake of not cooking it properly. Are you okay with your cooker? Yeah. So I was just checking out that the um, <laughs> heat under my hob is still on. Okay. Um, I guess, so, so what do you do to, you know, would you put one in, sort of cook it till it looks done and then take it out and try it? Yeah, this is what I did. I just wanted to test and this is so crispy. I just wanted to check when I tried it, um, when I put in the big name. So this is, you can, you can taste it. You can then, um, let's do this. So if you cut it, look, it's all cooked. Yeah. And um, Christine's asked um, a good question. You, are you turning them while they cook? 
I haven't turned mine as it happens, but did you so tip your yeah, over? Well, and you turn, so if I do one, so here, let's go back on there. Yeah. They are, they are there and I, yeah, I do turn them. Okay. So they kind of go around in the pan and then you turn them around as well. So Lovely. they are cooked. A brilliant question. Thank you. Uh, another question in from Alison. Yes. Do you have to parboil the potatoes first? I didn't parboil them, no. No, I didn't either. So, no, no, no. Okay. that's why we've cut it into like a size of a sweet corn. But yes. you can parboil it. So if you have roast potatoes left, you can use them. So you oh, good idea. Use... So, you can use leftover cooked potatoes if you wanted to. Yes. Even if you've got no fresh potatoes in your home, you can use tinned potatoes as well. So you can use anything you would like. Okay. Okay, I'm showing mine to all who are interested. I'm quite proud of them. This is the very first time I've made pakoras, Romy. I'm thrilled. Me too. Me too. I'm thrilled. I can't wait to. I hope everybody's making them. <laughs> well, even if not now, then hopefully later. Definitely later. So I'm going to cook more in batches because we want to finish this. But I also do the way Indian way we do. We just pick up I, like this. Good idea. Now, Helen asks, would this recipe work in an air fryer? Have you ever used one of those? I, I haven't used, but my chef friends use them. They, they actually swear by it and they love it. Okay. So worth a try. Uh, we can't, so Helen, we can't guarantee this would work in a similar way, but uh, you might like yeah. to try it. But you um, used to try it because I haven't tried it, so I cannot, but that's why I said my friends do it. I don't know. And also, I I personally think samosas and pakoras need to be fried. <laughs> you need to okay. be fried. <laughs> this is something I think so, you know. I don't eat it every day, so I prefer to be a naughty sometimes. I'm with you. <laughs> so just turn them around. I'm not making them too big. If I pick them up, look how beautifully they're coated because we haven't added too much flour. There's a, a lot of people may make a mistake of adding too much flour. Then all you can, when you're biting to it, is you can taste the, too much of the flour. I, I prefer this way. It's nice. I can't wait to taste it. I hope you guys are all enjoying it. And this, this chickpea um, pakoras, these, flour, these pakoras with this flour or any other flour, it's gluten-free, it's great for vegans. Um, and also we make a curry with it, like an Indian curry with yogurt. Um, but I also have a vegan uh, curry which I make with coconut yogurt. So you can use that um, and make, we, then we cook with like onions, ginger, garlic, this base of the curry and then dip this for quarters like dumplings in it and it's so simple um sometimes simple things can be extraordinary delicious so i prefer simple things in my cooking and i don't like wasting anything i think that's the indian in me <laughs> so nice crispy pakoras here she is they look great Romy. and the chutney are you going to taste some guys Let's um, okay, so just I need I'm going to field a couple of questions at you, Romy. Roughly, yeah. how many pakoras does this recipe make? So it makes about fifteen. So it's worth fifteen, or, or depending on the sizes. Mine, I think, are twenty. Three, depending. Four, on yeah. Yes, it needs to be hot. Please serve them hot with the chutney. Here we are. Hot it is. Hot it is. Right. Let's get a little bit of chutney in a bowl. Yes. If anyone is making these, oh, how long will the chutney keep? Wendy asks. So this keeps about uh, in a week, uh, for a week in a fridge. So please keep it in a fridge. Don't keep it outside, but in a fridge for a week. And well, make it in a bulk. Nice. You can make it in a bulk as well. But I guess what you were saying is that, you know, um, what's popular in Indian cooking is to make them fresh. You know, these aren't these aren't chutneys or relishes that, that you know, that will preserve. So... I guess the joy is eating them on day one, but if they can last for longer in the fridge, then that's great. And they're so easy to make as well. It's very quick as well. You know, it's so, so easy. Oh, yes. I'm chutney there. So when I grew up, when I was growing up and still now, I use ketchup. So I love ketchup. So if you want to use ketchup, 
That's it. I, I forgot to mention this. So if anyone's got any tomato ketchup with them, this is the dish to, to eat them with. I never would have guessed. Yes, ketchup and, uh, and, and chutney. And here we go. Okay. Amy, are you going to taste, taste yes. it with me? Right, coming up. Okay, here we are. Bit of chutney as well. Oh, I tell you what, they smell so good. They're so good, right? Yeah. I can't tell you how tasty these are and relatively so simple, honestly. Just chopping, mixing. There you are. Um, can you see it? Yes. They're crispy. Nice aren't? and crispy. And 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 as 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 we were asked, we didn't need to parboil the potatoes, but because they were chopped so so small, they've cooked all the way through. So I'm so impressed. Thank you very much for introducing me to this recipe, Romy, and to everyone else who's followed. Right, we'll say goodbye. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone. We'll see Thank you soon. You. <laughs>